parents seeking to take their children abroad or those who want to seek treatment outside the country. The free fall of the shilling is more taxes from the suffering Kenyans. The taxes rose at a time the overall economy has been contracting. In the second quarter of 2022, which is the first era of Kenya Kwanza regime leading into 2023, the economy grew by only 5.2%. In a similar period in 2021, it grew by 11%. The regime resorted to more borrowing, ignoring the warnings that we are in debt distress and at the risk of debt default. Without blinking an eye, the regime went against its promises to reduce borrowing and did the complete opposite. Kenyans responded to this turn of events by trying to steady their businesses, especially the small enterprises. But those efforts were in vain as interest rates rose through, rose through the roof and more taxes hit those businesses. Only the government can now afford to borrow at the astronomical rate of 17% or more from the domestic market. In other words, the government is competing in the private sector in the domestic financial market. The result has been that macro and small businesses are struggling, defaulting, and folding up when the larger private sector is at best stagnating or equally folding up. In the last one year, the proportion of micro and small businesses defaulting on loans has increased by 17%. Today, six out of 10 micro and small businesses are either pay paying late, paying only a part of, the, of their installment, or are unable to pay. Inflation is driven by the cost of food and fuel. As long as the government has not resolved the price of food and fuel, the cost of living will not come down. No amount of fertilizer will lower the cost of food <laughs> as long as the cost of fuel is unchecked. Diesel is one of the highest costs in farming. Even if you give the citizen a bag of fertilizer, but make it impossible for her or him to plow an acre of land, you have not solved the problem. The shilling taking the, 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 the grains, like maize, wheat, and rice that we import, uh, the, those commodities have increased by 25%. As the economy has suffered, another grand betrayal of dreams has unfolded silently in the education sector. As a party, we believe that we cannot neglect education no matter the magnitude of the economic challenges uh, that we, we, uh, we are grappling with. We believe that if we are not to spend just one, if we are to spend just on one thing, it should be education. In one year, Kenya Kwanza has thrown the education sector into a deep financial crisis. In public, Kenya Kwanza administration continues to walk to talk about free education. The reality in our schools and homes across Kenya is that education is no longer free, either in primary or secondary schools. Inadequate funding is growing into a full-blown crisis in primary and secondary schools, forcing head teachers 
to beg from well-wishers to help finance schools, straining parents further and threatening the high en enrollment reached in recent years as many students are sent home for school fees. Although academic year is coming to an end, the funds that have been released to schools are, are way below what was required. In some of the schools, the government has disbursed as low as 15,000 shillings for a student population of 400. Some schools received as low as Kenya shillings 3,000. We are, however, very concerned that under the Kenya Kwanzaa, education and the country are getting compromised by mismanagement, lack of clarity, lack of interest, and weak leadership in the sector. Verbally, education field officers have been instructed to work with schools, PTAs, and BOMs and approve measures to help schools raise funds for their, their operations. For schools, this only means raising school fees. As a result of weak leadership, examination integrity is back as an issue in our education. Implementation of the CBC curriculum is in chaos. Mismanagement persists as key institutions like the TAC, the KNEC, and the ministry itself. Inequality between public and private schools is rising. The quality and capacity of day schools is deteriorating. But more worrying is that parents are being forced to pay for this chaotic and poor quality education. In the first one year under Kenya Kwanzaa, the cost of education has gone up by 225%, but the quality is not guaranteed. Fellow Kenyans, this has been a disastrous one, a disastrous one year under Kenya Kwanzaa. And we have no good new, new or encouraging words to offer. There are strong indications that the things will get worse or remain the same. We, however, refuse to ask, we, have, we refuse to ask you to tighten your belts. You have done enough. The ball is squarely in the court of the regime. They either act or await the fate that has fallen other insensitive and incompetent regimes across the continent. Yeah. End of statement. Yeah, uh, on this issue of, of education, it's even worse in the university. They have come up with uh, uh, grading uh, or, or, uh, and basically grouping students in terms of means and so on, and that they are required to pay 7%. Uh, Quite a number of those students are actually being sent home because uh, the administration in various public universities are insisting on advance payment before admission. Of course, uh, 
that is very true. And uh, as you know, we are going to be giving you as another statement tomorrow on the issue of the dialogue, which is ongoing. But of course, our number one agenda was the cost of living. It is still there. Of course, the other side has been making statements that they don't want it to be discussed. But we have insisted that it must be agenda item number one uh, in the talks. And the other one is the issue of electoral justice, uh, which is very central uh, to our coalition. Uh, and that must also be on, 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 on the agenda. So uh, there will be uh, a statement coming again tomorrow. But I also want you to know that we will tomorrow be also giving our own um, assessment of the overall performance of Kenya Kwanza government this one year, our scorecard. Uh, that will be coming up, uh, up tomorrow. Let's wait for tomorrow. There will be another statement. Okay. Yes, one. The government says the reason for the increase in fuel is global, you know, global <laughs> surge in oil prices. But a few months ago, the Kenya Kwanzaa government signed a deal with Gulf countries for oil importation. And they said this deal would reduce the demand on the dollar, which means then the shilling would come down and also reduce the price of fuel as well. What does, it, does the opposition make um, of this promise that was made by Kenya Kwanzaa? I mean... Uh and as far as you're concerned, that is really the cause of the problem we're having when they interfered with the OTS. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to you as somebody who has been a minister for energy in my other early incarnations. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is the, the cause of the mess that we're having. They say that we are going to do a G2G and that they are going to pay in Kenya shillings. And you ask yourself, what are the Arabs in the, middle, in the Middle East going to do with Kenya shillings. <laughs> She's falling down. So the, the time as we see the chicken are coming back home to roost yeah. here. So that's put us, where we, put us where we are here. And it is unfortunate that it's the Kenyans, who are, the innocent Kenyans who are basically now suffering mm. when those who are responsible are globetrotting, looking at coffee in, 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 in Colombia. <laughs> Uh, 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 I mean, uh, 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 tigers, uh, they're moving around when the Kenyans are suffering. It's very, very unfortunate indeed. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>